Hello, I'm Sabrina and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So when I was little, probably around seven or eight years old, I was cleaning my bedroom and I came across a little pouch that you might get like jewelry in. I'll put a picture on the screen because I don't have an example right now of what I'm talking about. But coming across this pouch, I had the thought, wouldn't this be so cute if it was made to look like a strawberry? And it was just a passing thought, but it has lived in my head ever since. And recently I have come upon sewing and I thought, well, wouldn't now be a great time to try to figure out if I could make that strawberry pouch that I was thinking of. But instead of making a pouch, I'm going to try to make it a drawstring backpack. So that's the goal for today. And when I was at Joann's just now buying some materials for this project, the woman asked what I was making and I was like, oh, I want to try to make like a strawberry backpack. And she's like, oh, they have a lot of cute designs on that. And wouldn't the logical thing be to look up a pre-existing design and try to make it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try to design it myself. And I already tried to figure out a pattern for this and it did not come out well at all. This is what it ended up looking like. It really doesn't look like a strawberry. But I thought of a ridiculous idea for how to come up with a very accurate strawberry pattern. And I figured, why not go right to the source? So yes, you may be thinking this is an absolutely ridiculous way to make a pattern, and you're not wrong. But is it ridiculous if it works? Oh no, oh no. He's a sad strawberry. <laughs> so basically, I went to the store and picked up a pack of strawberries with the most quintessential strawberry looking strawberries and cut them into sixths. Once I did this, I traced the shape so I could get the right shape for my pattern pieces. Because when I had tried to come up with what I thought would be a good shape, it was garbage. So once I traced them, I took a measurement of the dimensions and scaled that up to make it backpack size. I then traced my pattern pieces onto some scrap fabric so I could do a mock-up. I cut my pieces out and then stitched that fish together. I then did a basting stitch at the top so I could gather the opening and get an idea of if it would look right when the backpack was closed. And it looked like a deflated onion. But I knew I was going to be adding batting and I figured that would help hold its shape. So I moved forward. First, I cut out my lining fabric, which was a synthetic fabric. So in order to make sure it didn't fray, I heat sealed it. And once all my pieces were cut and sealed, I sewed them together. Then rinse and repeat for the batting. What would have been smart would have been to sew it all together at the same time, but here we are. This whole project was trial and error, and it was like one step forward, three steps back. So now we have our lining fully covered in batting. Let's flip it inside out and see if we've got more of a strawberry shape. I definitely think this reads a little bit more strawberry. Granted, this is going to be the inside, so it will be facing the other way, but I think, hopefully, this is reading more strawberry. It's definitely holding its form a little bit more. But now I have to cut out the, what is gonna be the outside, and then put these two together. Now it was time to cut the outer fabric of my strawberry. Do we really need to be watching this again? Eh, probably not. But I just wanted to share with you the true animal I turn into when I'm in the depths of a project. Oi, look at how she stalks her prey. Ain't she a beaut? Anyway, then I, you guessed it, stitched that shiz together. Now it came time to hand stitch the seeds, aka beads. 
This is where I ran into another one of those hindsight is 2020 moments. Because I wanted to stitch through the outside fabric as well as the batting so I could have the seeds sink into the fabric a little more so they hopefully looked sunken in like an actual strawberry. So it would have been smart to sew the batting to the outer fabric instead of the lining fabric. Instead I just stuck my hand in between the layers which was fine but it was just a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. Once all my seeds were sewn on, it was time to make the leaves for the top. For this, I just freehanded a leaf shape I liked and cut out 16 of those in my fabric, so I had 8 leaves in total. Then I sewed those right sides together, leaving the base of the leaf open so I could flip it right side out. And then I sewed those to the top of my strawberry. Next, I cut out two strips of fabric that would become my channel at the top for the drawstrings to go through. I then did a zigzag stitch along the outside edge and then hand stitched the inside edge. Once the channel at the top was done, I fed my cord through using a safety pin and the bag was done. Time for the reveal. So before I reveal what the project came out like, I thought I'd talk to you about how the project actually went. So due to the magic that is video editing, I was able to um, remove a lot of the issues that I encountered during this project, but I thought I would let you in on the behind the scenes and show you what actually happened throughout this process. So to start, I had originally bought this really nice velvety stretchy fabric that I planned on using for the outer fabric of my strawberry. Unfortunately, I am inexperienced with stretchy fabrics and I'm pretty new to sewing. So me and this fabric and my sewing machine did not get along. Whenever I tried to sew with this fabric, my sewing machine just kept eating it and then I'd have to take it apart, take out all the loose strings that got in there, put it back together and try again. And after several times of doing that, I decided to just take a break and try to sew through regular fabric and my machine just kept eating it. So unfortunately, I ended up having to take my machine to a shop where it sat for two weeks before I could get it back. They didn't seem to see anything wrong with it, so I'm guessing it was user error. I then did a little bit of research and found out there are needles specifically for a stretchier fabric. So I went and bought one of those needles and tried again. I still ran into issue and it still just seemed to be getting eaten by machine. So ultimately I decided I need to find a different fabric. So I did go with a different fabric. It was still stretchy and still had a similar feel to what I wanted, but it wasn't quite as pretty and shimmery, but it worked. Um, so that was like the first major, two major issues I guess I ran into. Another issue I ran into was the fabric that I had planned on using for the leaves as well as the top channel for the drawstring to go through. I had bought a while ago for another project. I had specifically bought it for my Monet skirt and it ended up being the elastic band on that skirt, but I knew I wanted to use it for this project as well. So I had bought significantly more fabric and I just lost it in my art room and I searched for quite a while and could not find it. So since I couldn't find that fabric, I figured, why not try using the lining fabric to try to make at least the channel for the drawstring? I attempted that and I sewed on the whole channel. Unfortunately, that fabric was much too stiff and it could not draw string, I guess. Like it wouldn't cinch in, it was just way too stiff. It looked cute and it came out really nice. Like it sewed very nicely and it looked very professional but it just wasn't what I wanted, so I ultimately had to take that apart, and I did end up finding that fabric, which was very nice. I just wish I had found it sooner. Then the last issue I ran into with this project was the cord for the drawstring. So the cord you see in the footage, me feeding it through the channel, is the original cord I bought, and unfortunately I bought too little of it. So it wasn't long enough to both go through the strawberry and then also go over my shoulders, but I didn't know that until after I had strung it and tried to put it on, so I ended up needing to go back to the store and get different cord and restring it. So even though this project looks like it went relatively smoothly, I did run into a lot of issues and it was a big learning experience throughout the whole process. Just coming up with a pattern, 
and trying to work with different fabrics I hadn't used before and just making something functional. It was all, all new to me. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. It's not exactly how I pictured it, but since it is my fourth sewing project on this channel, I'm relatively pleased with it, but I will let you all be the judge. Time for the reveal. So ta-da! Here it is in all its strawberry glory. Is it perfect? No, there are definitely things I would like to change, such as the leaves. I really wish I had put them all along the top rather than spacing them out. And it really would have been nice to be able to use the velvety fabric that I originally had planned for this project. But all in all, I think it's pretty cute. One thing I did forget to show was the little tab at the bottom that holds the strands for the backpack was just the same fabric I used for the leaves and the top, and it was literally just cutting a triangle about yay big, folding it so that the bad side of the fabric was facing out, sewing along that opening, and flipping it inside out, giving me a tube, and then sewing it to the bottom of the bag. Um, so really not too complicated and I just hand stitched it to the bottom of the bag. So that is it. That is how I made my strawberry bag. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.